A jury now deliberating in the case of a Connecticut woman accused of paying her handyman $5,000 in hopes that he would kill her ex-husband. Key moment in the trial came when the maintenance worker took the stand testifying that he got scared and then made a secret recording of her, the woman, showing that the 39-year-old mother demanded he go through with the murder. Oh boy, joining us now, criminal defense attorney Patrick Michael Magaro and trial attorney Rebecca Rose Woodland. Good to see you both. Hi there. All right, so I got to ask you, Patrick, if that's your client, what do you do with that recording? The recording is simple. It's missing major parts. And I think the defense lawyer in this case did an excellent job exposing both the ex-husband and the maintenance worker for the liars that they really are. Here you have an ex-husband, an ongoing bitter dispute over custody of a daughter and what he believed was control of a $50 million trust fund. This lawyer did an excellent job exposing him for real, who he really is. This is a man that called his ex-wife a prostitute, placed her telephone number on Craigslist, created phony prostitution ads. This is a man that threatened to blackmail her with a sex tape. And when all of these things didn't work, what does he do? He sets her up using this convicted felon as a patsy in the scheme. He uses this man to set this woman up to create this non-existent murder for hire plot. Well, this what? was pushed on him. This was pushed on Tiffany Stevens by this maintenance worker, not the other way around. All right. So, Rebecca, what do we do with that when it sounds like in that conversation, uh, at least at some point, he's saying, you know, you kill somebody, you get the electric chair. And she just keeps saying, do it, do it. Well, some say the recording was about a drug deal or something else. Um, you know, what do you do with her? Uh, what sounds like her own words. Well, yeah, uh, as the prosecution in this case clearly depicted, it's not only her words. It's the words of the maintenance man who is now serving time in jail because he admitted that he was involved in this plot. So it's not only her audio tape against the ex-husband. We have the person who was the man who was what we want to say, if we want to say contracted for hire, the $5,000 apparently crossed hands, and this man says she asked him to kill the ex-husband. Now, there are so many things in this case that lead to the probability that she was looking to kill him. The $50 million was her ex-husband's. She was trying to get the $50 million. It's from his family. Apparently, that's what the prosecution claims was her intent, was not only to kill the ex-husband, was to take the $50 million money that would go to her daughter and maintain that trust and basically spend the money for herself, although she's from a very wealthy family herself. So there's so much here. But just her words on that tape aren't the only thing that the jury's listening to and deliberating right now at 1.30 as we're here. The jury is in Connecticut deliberating. Yeah, and of course, uh, prosecutors always have a burden of proof in these mm -hmm. kinds of cases uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. Patrick, do you think uh, that they've come anywhere close to reaching that very high burden? Let me quote John Bender. Not even close, bud. This is a person, th this is a tape that has significant holes that are inaudible in it. Who has control of the tape? The person who has every motive to lie, the person who is selling this woman drugs, and the person that knows that if he gets caught selling this woman drugs, not only is he being blackmailed by the ex-husband, he's going to go to prison, not just for what he's pled guilty to, which in and of itself is every reason for him to lie, but much longer, much more time in prison if he's caught with his misdeeds. So what does he do? He shifts the blame onto her, he gets in bed with this ex-husband, and they create this murder for hire plot. Not even close. All right, Rebecca, I want to turn to another <laughs> alleged murder for hire case yep. that we have here because now we've got a case that deals with a guy who his wife died um, and there were allegations that he was carrying on a very uh, illicit alternative lifestyle and that she was in the way. That's the allegation and that he had her killed mm -hmm. and that he hired a handyman to do it. The handyman says, Again. Uh, you know, and, and the crazy thing is the husband's in jail because he, then he allegedly hired a hitman to kill the original hitman so that he <laughs> wouldn't speak. Um, but at the end of the day, we we have this woman's murder mm -hmm. um, and you know again the jury will soon be parsing this out and it is way stranger than fiction 
This is bizarre. I mean, this happened in Gross Point, Michigan, where they haven't had, they haven't seen a murder like this in years. A very affluent family. Apparently, the allegations are husband hired hitman number one to kill his wife. He's into sadomasochistic behavior, very controlling, has a mistress, decides he wants to be with his mistress. They have a lot of emails detailing his aggression towards his wife and his desire to be with the mistress and to relieve himself of his wife. The wife was found strangled in a car, which is very unfortunate. Um, we do have the murder for hire. The person is in jail. There is so much here that in this particular case, I think the jury's got a lot more to look at because this S&M lifestyle and the severe controlling behavior might influence the jury very, very yeah. strongly against the defendants. There's, there's been a lot of discussion about how much of that could be allowed in or not. We mm -hmm. are out of time, but uh, Patrick and Rebecca, great to see you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.